Hey guys, Judd from Diabetes Smarts here. First of all, I wanna say a big thank you to all of you. We've now got over 20,000 subscribers and that is awesome. We are so grateful and excited to have you guys with us. And we're looking forward to releasing lots more fun and informative content about your health and how you can stop diabetes in its tracks. If you do wanna learn more about how to live your life beyond diabetes, just click the link in the description below. We're giving away two free gifts to say thanks for the support. And because, well, you know, we just love giving out free stuff. We'll tell you more about the second free gift later in this vid, but the main reason I'm talking to you right now is to discuss our other free gift, Superfoods for Diabetics. It's our new book and it can help you transform your kitchen, your waistline, your wallet, and your relationship with your blood sugar. Wanna know more? Stick around. Today, I'm diving into some of my personal favorite superfoods for diabetics. That's right, today's vid is all about our own book, Superfoods for Diabetics. We're really proud of this book, guys, and I think it is the perfect place for you to start if you are worried about diabetes or your health in general, especially if you're wondering which foods to get onto your plate on a regular basis. So our free book, Superfoods for Diabetics, gives you an in-depth look at 25 of the absolute healthiest, most natural, most cost-effective, and yes, most versatile and delicious foods you should look to make a part of your weekly diet, whether or not you're worried about diabetes. But these 25 foods are especially great if you are looking to better balance your glucose levels. And honestly, all of the amazingly healthy foods found in Superfoods for Diabetics also just taste good. They can all naturally make their way into a whole array of meals. So that means that these aren't just foods that you can consider adding once in a blue moon. These are some of the main foods you can, and you know what, you should make a habit of grabbing each time you visit the supermarket or if you make online purchases for your groceries. And by the way, Superfoods for Diabetics also takes a deep dive into 10 of the worst foods for you to eat. Some of these foods you might actually be surprised to learn can be hazardous to your health and they can actually make your insulin resistance worse. So that is definitely something you guys should check out as well. But today, I just wanna focus on a few of my favorite of those wonderful superfoods so that you can jumpstart your health right away. So let's start with one of my favorites and you know what, probably one of your favorites too. I'm talking about avocados. Yes, avos are just one of the most delicious foods on the planet, if you ask me. I love making guacamole. I love sliced avocado on 100% whole wheat toast. I add avos to my burritos and tacos, of course, but they're also really easy to add into other meals. Like I add them into my salads, into my stir fries. I put avocados on pretty much anything and everything. But I love adding avocados to my meals, not just for the taste, but because this is one fat rich food that is actually good for you. So why is this? How does a food so high in fat actually help your health? Well, avocados are high in unsaturated fats. By now, if you've watched any of our other vids or if you've had a chance to check out our series, That Diabetes Documentary, you probably know that unsaturated fats are considered to be good fats and far healthier than those saturated fats you'll find in products like, you know, greasy potato chips or cookies. So why are unsaturated fats not only good for us, but actually necessary for good health? Unsaturated fat can actually help your body remove LDL cholesterol. That's the bad kind of cholesterol. Yeah, just like fat, there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. So the good cholesterol is what's called HDL cholesterol. And guess what? At the same time as the unsaturated fat from avocados helps you decrease your LDL cholesterol, it's also working to increase your HDL cholesterol. So that is a win-win right there. And many nutritionists are now really pushing these low-carb, high-fat diets 
as a treatment for diabetes. So if you were to ask those who believe in like the keto diet or other diets like that, they'd probably all list avocados as one of the first foods, if not the first, to add to your diet. But avos aren't just going to give you healthy fats. They're also going to give you a whole lot of beneficial vitamins and other helpful nutrients like vitamin C and vitamin K, potassium and magnesium. They contain carbohydrates, but they also contain basically the same amount of fiber as carbs. So that fiber is going to help slow your body's insulin response. So yeah, for so many reasons, in fact, too many to discuss here, avocados are one of my absolute favorite superfoods. Okay, I wanna move on to another amazing superfood that I will never get enough of, and one that I usually have in any meal where there's also avocado. It's also just nice for presentation because this food comes in a rainbow of colors. So what food am I talking about? Bell peppers. Here in New Zealand where I live and other parts of the world, they're called capsicum, but whatever you wanna call them, they are awesome. And I love any color. But here's a little known tidbit about bell peppers. They're actually in a way all the same color. The difference in color comes from how ripe the pepper is. Green is the least ripe, while red is the most ripe, and in between you've got orange and yellow. But no matter what the color, any bell pepper or capsicum, if that's what you want to call them, they're going to give you amazing health benefits. Bell peppers are not only low in calories, but they are also high in fiber. So that fiber is going to help your body better manage the carb load you get with these peppers or any other carb heavy food you happen to be eating with that meal. They're also an excellent source of both vitamin A and vitamin C. In fact, they are so high in these vitamins that just one cup of bell peppers will give you 100% of your daily recommended intake for both vitamin A and vitamin C. So. Forget the orange juice, forget those supplements, just eat a few slices of bell peppers and you'll be set. But beyond vitamins, bell peppers are going to supply you with many other amazing nutrients like folate and beta carotene. Beta carotene is a pigment, so that's what's giving your peppers their color. But beta carotene is also an antioxidant, which is going to help your body fight inflammation and free radical damage. That means it's helping you lower your risk of cancer. There's also evidence to suggest that beta carotene can help slow cognitive decline, meaning it is a wonderful food to aid in brain health. Any Mexican dish I cook is just loaded with bell peppers, but you know what? I also love adding them to Asian dishes or most any stir fry in general. And you can simply eat them raw if you're feeling a little bit peckish and just need a snack, but want to avoid those chips and crackers. At mealtime, just a few strips of raw bell peppers can completely transform the flavor of a salad. They may become a bit more expensive at certain times of the year. So if you were to come to my house and to look in my freezer, you would see bags upon bags of frozen chopped bell peppers. That means I always have a constantly fresh supply and I tend to add them to several meals a week. All right, so now we've taken a close look at some superfoods, which I personally love, but you know what? I guess now is as good a time as any to talk about a food that I really don't love. In fact, this is one food that I kind of despise. That said, this particular food is loved by many people all across the world, and it's going to give you a long list of health benefits. What am I talking about? Beets. Yeah, those purple monstrosities. I don't like beets, can you tell? But you know what, if I'm being perfectly honest, my taste for beets has grown recently now that I'm really actively trying to get them into my weekly diet. So that could just be power of suggestion, just knowing that beets are such a healthy choice. Perhaps my taste buds are just starting to come around to the flavor. But no matter what, whether or not you like the taste of beets, here's why they are so great for your health. First of all, beets are low in calories. And while they're high in carbohydrates, they contain a good amount of fiber. So that's going to slow your body's response to the sugar within beets. They also come loaded with vitamin C, potassium, phosphorus, and they have a huge amount of folate. 
Folate is a B vitamin, which is going to aid your body in converting carbohydrates to energy. And it's also going to help your body make red and white blood cells. Obviously very important. And beets also contain a lot of nitrates, which have been shown to lower blood pressure. So beets are excellent for heart health. They can also aid in digestive health. In brain health, they can help your body fight inflammation and their high water content can help you with weight management. Now, when it comes to how to get beets onto your plate, you've actually got some good options. You can roast them in the oven or you can just boil them. Though I wouldn't suggest boiling them as much because that does tend to suck out some of the best nutrients. But you can also just eat them raw. In fact, the other night, that's exactly what I did. I grated a raw beet and I mixed it into a salad. And you know what? I didn't even taste the beets when I added them to my meal like that, which was, let's face it, just fine with me. Just to let you know though, beet juice is used in dyes and food coloring. So if you are handling a raw beet, try working with them under cold water or just use some gloves so that they don't turn your fingers a lovely shade of Joker purple. Okay, so now I've covered a few excellent superfoods to get onto your plate at mealtime, but let's talk about a snack superfood. Now, before anyone jumps into the comments section screaming that snacking is not healthy, that can be an accurate statement. I'm not saying you should go add extra snacks to your daily routine, but if you are in the habit of snacking on those highly processed, high sugar foods like potato chips or crackers or junk desserts like cookies or candy bars, here is something you can use as a replacement. Maybe something to wean yourself away from those foods and off of snacking altogether. And this is a snack food which can actually be an awesome, flavorful addition to your meals. I'm talking about nuts, but one nut specifically, the wholesome and delicious walnut. What makes walnuts so awesome for your health? Well, first of all, they are going to be an excellent source of protein and fats. Just like avocados, they contain those healthy polyunsaturated fats, which is gonna help you rid your body of LDL cholesterol and can also reduce inflammation. Another absolute must if you are worried about diabetes. Walnuts are a great source for vitamin E, for other antioxidants and for fiber. If you are in need of a snack, those potato chips, which are created by scientists to hit that bliss point, those kind of snacks are only going to feed your cravings and will actually keep you feeling hungry. That's why one chip is never enough. But walnuts can be used as a snack that will actually make you feel full. But I do try to stay away from snacks in general. However, I just can't get enough of walnuts. I love putting them in salads for some extra crunch. I put them in certain stir fries. They can just work on a whole heap of other meals. And you don't have to do anything to them, cooking wise, to make them palatable. They're just great eaten on their own, or if you do want to put in a little extra effort, you can always toss them onto your fry pan and lightly toast them to bring out some of that extra flavor. But no matter how you eat walnuts, they're gonna give you a shot of nutrition. All right, so now we've covered some powerful vegetables and fruit. Avocados actually are, technically speaking, considered to be fruit. And I've talked a bit about one of the best kinds of nuts you can get into your diet. But I wanna move on to an amazing super spice you can use in your meals. But before we get to that, just another quick reminder, guys, don't forget to like this vid and subscribe to our channel. We've also got those two free gifts coming your way. The first of which, of course, is the main topic for today's vid, and that's our new book, Superfoods for Diabetics. Our second free gift gives you access to view episode one of our eight-part series, That Diabetes Documentary. Again, just click that link in the description below to grab both free gifts. Okay, on to the incredible super spice, cinnamon. So yeah, you might be thinking, can cinnamon actually be good for me? Isn't that just part of desserts? Well, yeah, cinnamon can work really well flavor-wise in those less than healthy treats, but there's a wide variety of healthy meals in which you can add cinnamon. And this spice on its own is actually considered to be one of the most powerful superfoods on the planet. Why is that? Well, cinnamon contains a whole heap of antioxidants, 
which is going to work to fight inflammation and free radical damage. And in essence, they're going to help your body to avoid certain types of cancer. Cinnamon has also been shown to lower your LDL, or bad, cholesterol while raising your HDL cholesterol. And it's also been shown to lower blood pressure. That means cinnamon is a powerful spice to aid in heart health. And that is a key for anyone worried about diabetes. But uh, speaking of, cinnamon has also been shown to improve insulin sensitivity. So it's going to help your body better manage your glucose levels. And that is key number one for anyone with blood sugar issues. That means if you are worried about diabetes, try adding just a pinch of cinnamon to your coffee or your tea. You can sprinkle it over a sweet potato, or over a bit of fruit. You can add a tiny bit of cinnamon to soups or stews. You can even use it in a curry sauce or as part of a meat marinade. It works surprisingly well with other flavors beyond just those sweet desserts. Just make sure not to overdo it on the cinnamon because too much of it can be toxic. And definitely don't take the cinnamon challenge. That is going to seriously damage your lungs. So just because we're advocating upping your level of cinnamon does not mean I'm telling you to shove a giant spoonful of cinnamon into your mouth. But adding just a small amount of this spice to your drinks or your meals can make a world of difference to your health. So guys, those were just five of the 25 amazing superfoods we discuss in Superfoods for Diabetics. So be sure to click that link in the description below to get your free copy of the book. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate your support and we love hearing from you guys. We're always looking to improve our channel and to have the most current and accurate information. So definitely feel free to comment below. And again, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the Diabetes Smarts channel to keep up to date with more vids just like this. Everybody's body is unique and one food that may be great for me might not be so great for you. That's why it is up to each of us to experiment and find the very best foods for us personally. That said, the foods that I've mentioned in today's vid should give you some amazing nutritional benefits and help you live a life beyond diabetes. So I hope that superfoods for diabetics can get you off to a good start in your race towards a life of good health. And on that note, I hope you're having a happy and healthy day.